thanks very much, Gordon, for putting on this sharing day. Congratulations on your new album as well, Thank um, you. The Last of England. Thank you. It's a really great collection of really sort of cinematic songs to me, you know. It's interesting you should say that because I sent a copy or one of the tracks to Brian May. And uh, he said, uh, he said, oh, I can see a film, he said, when he hears the music. Anya's Dream is a favourite. Yeah, and Sadie in May, because it's dedicated to my daughter. But I love it all, actually. It's quite a different sort of sound to what you've done previously. Um, how have your sort of musical tastes changed throughout the years, and why do you think it is? Well, I don't think they've changed that much, but basically this album has got as close as I could ever wish for within the budget that we had uh, to create something orchestral. And teaming up with Paul Ward, who's a fine musician, uh, was a dream come true. Without Paul, this album wouldn't have happened. Many great guitarists, and I think you included, attribute their unique playing style not to having any formal lessons. Do you think that formal lessons can hinder some creative freedom, if you will? It's a difficult one because I've never had any formal lessons. It's, it's, it maybe, maybe it would have pushed me on a lot quicker. I think in terms of having lessons, it, it, it kind of saves you a bit of time. But in terms of creativity, nobody can teach you to be creative. They can just point the way. I think that's within, the, within, the, uh, within each individual. You know, if they've got a creative flair, then that will come out. Yeah, when you're sort of practicing, you, you kind of need to feel the music and be creative. And yeah. You, would you sort of take more of a performance-based approach to practicing then rather than theory-based? Theory yeah, I suppose, I suppose I do, really. Uh, I know when I was working with Raymond Burley, the classical player, um, I said to him, do you think I should take some theory lessons, Ray? And he said, no, he said, it'll just get in the way. Get in the way of your creativity. He said, it'll he make you start thinking about things. He said, theoretically, what you do shouldn't work. He said, but it does. string instruments and therefore the guitar no matter what it is whether it be a six string a 12 string a hybrid any old guitar really but as long as it sounds nice will inspire me anything outside of music, hobbies or interests, that you like to do that you can kind of get a spark of creativity from? Do you know, it's an interesting question. I, 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 my wife and I are great collectors of, of uh, we'll say antiques, but Art Nouveau, Art Deco, glass, and beautiful things, I think. I think if you, in order to create beauty, you've got to be surrounded by it and inspired by it.
How did you stay motivated to continue your journey with the guitar? I think like so many guitar players I know, uh, it becomes an obsession. So the, that in itself is a motivation. You know, you want to get better. You want to improve as a player. And I know for me, my sound, if you like, my approach and my technique as such, developed over about 12 months from fairly basic stuff, in my opinion anyway through listening to, to other great players, trying to emulate them, and then discovering that you can do it, and you've, you've got a technique to do it, and you use that technique as a tool to express yourself creatively. The way you do that quite a lot with your sort of pieces is using alternate tunings as well. Um, how do you use those to your benefit when you're actually writing these pieces? Yeah, sometimes I, I probably use more weird tunings than, than standard. Um, and I've often said to people that tuning is there to create a tune. It's purely a tool, a creative tool that should inspire you and open up new avenues of, of sonic experimentation, if you like. Because there's certain things you can do with an open tuning and using things like partial capos that you can't get with a standard tuned guitar or even an open tuning, particularly with a partial capo. The new album, The Last of England, uh, it's inspired by many of the paintings of the pre-Raphaelite movement, which are sublimely beautiful and otherworldly. And uh, that in itself is an inspiration. But I've always had, had paintings uh, as a form, of, a form of, or a source of inspiration. When I did my visionary album in 1976, the inspiration was William Blake, some of his paintings and poems. And then I did an album in 1981 called The Peacock Party, and that was inspired by the book of the same name uh, with Alan Aldridge's illustration. So it's always been there. I've always believed that uh, the music should create an image and create colours. When you listen to it, you should see something, you know? That's if it's, if it's worthy of anything. And uh, so therefore that, that visual inspiration has always been there. If you're creative as a guitar player, try not to listen to too many other guitar players because you can then end up picking up their little licks and ideas. When I first started out in the business as a recording artist, my then producer, a genius of a man called Bill Leader, he urged me to listen to all kinds of music, particularly the music of Domenico Scarlatti, the harpsichord player. And uh, I think maybe that harpsichord approach is still there subconsciously within my music, you know? Yes, and the trills and that, that kind of bright sound that I like, you know, that kind of attack that the, the harpsichord has. And I think that I've, I've got a lot of that in my music. Have you got anything new in the pipeline or um, any things that you want to do in the future? I, you know, I'm very fortunate. I, I, I'll be honest with you, I hadn't planned to, to make any more albums. A couple of years ago, I thought, what is the point of making more albums when I've pretty, pretty much done all I ever wanted to do? And then I met a wonderful musician called Oliver Wakeman, who's the son of Rick Wakeman. And uh, I said, do you fancy collaborating on something? And we did an album called Ravens and Lull Lullabies that ended up being a full-blown progressive rock album with vocals and a lot of electric guitar for me. So he really kind of forced me out of my comfort zone. So that was good, so that was something different. But beyond that, I didn't have any plans. And then I was thinking about the material I'd written, a lot of commission pieces for other people, and I thought, do you know, I think I've got enough material for an album here. But the only way I could make it happen would be to collaborate with somebody else, because I didn't have the, the time, the budget, or the tools in order to make it the sort of album I wanted to make it. And so there was Paul Ward waiting in the wings. And a fantastic piece of music, you know, that's come out of it. Yes, a very, very, so. it's a very special album. Yeah. So, yeah, once again, Gordon, thanks very much for chatting to me today. My pleasure. It's been nice to talk to you. And, and uh, may I say hello to all your viewers, all you guitar players out there. Keep playing, keep enjoying it.
Feed your soul. Thanks very much for the free time. Thank you.